Okay, so now that we've moved past our uniform distribution, let's learn our like first really useful discrete random variable distribution. Okay, so we're still dealing with our discrete random variables. But this time we are going to talk about the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution is a very special case of discrete random variables. So when we have a binomial distribution, our responses have to be able to be broken down into success or failures. Now you might think that this kind of limits what's going on, but actually it helps us be able to do a whole bunch. So if you think back to, uh, to last week uh, or our previous section, we were dealing with um, cases where we were asking like what's the probability from a huge bag of M&Ms that we would select at least one green M&M from a draw of three and it was really hard how we had to go through and talk about that binomial distribution makes this really easy we need a couple of things one thing that we need is okay it has to be able to be determined to be done in successes or failures so there's only two options here so if we're rolling a dice we want to, and we roll it four times, we want to know what's the probability of rolling at least three sixes. So that each time it's either you roll a six or you don't roll a six. It's, it's defined in terms of successes and failures. Okay, then we need a number, number of outcomes or a number of trials. How many times are we going to go through it? And we need to know the probability probability of success of a single trial okay so when we were if we were to actually write this out we would need something like this okay so we would need and if we were to, let's do flipping a coin uh, three times. So we'll do flip, or let's, yeah, we'll do flip three times. Flip three times. And if we do that, our options are we could have zero tails, we could have one tail, we could have two tails, and we could have three tails. So our question is, is like, okay, how many possible outcomes do we have and we could try to find out the probabilities but we know that the probability so our number of trials here in this case would be three and the probability of success here would be equal to 0.5 now in the binomial distribution we actually have an equation that will let us know uh, how we can determine our probabilities of each event uh, without knowing what those actual probabilities are. All that we need to know is the probability of success and the number of trials. Okay, so our probability, our PMF function, this guy, is going to equal to, we're actually going to use some of our combinations. N, number of trials that we're doing, combination X, how many successes that we have, and then we're going to multiply by P to the X, so the probability of success, this guy, X is our specific support member that we're on, and then one minus P times, or raised to the power of N minus X. All right, so this is really complicated. We're not going to really do this um, by hand. I'm gonna show you how to do it in Excel in another video, uh, but this is, our way that we're going to determine these probabilities. Now let's just, we're gonna do this by hand, but just by using our sample space. So we know that our sample space for flipping three coins, that's gonna give us a total of eight outcomes. And let's see if I can't get these up. So we've got heads, 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 tails. Then we'll do something like heads, tails, heads and then heads, tails, tails. We could do tails, heads, heads. We could do tails, head, tails. And we could do tails, tails, heads, and give us tails, tails, tails. 
Okay, so we want to know the probability of flipping, we'll say a given number of tails, uh, just to be different. Okay, so the probability of, well, first of all, let's make sure they have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight total outcomes. So this is probability of our discrete random variable equaling, remember the support. And for zero, how many times do we see zero tails? And the answer is one. We see one, oops, sorry. Let me see if I can't erase this. We'll do one divided by eight. Okay, how many times do we see one tail? Well, there would be one tail here, one tail here, and we've got one tail here. So we've got three out of eight. How many times do we see two tails? All right, so one, two tails here, two tails here, two tails here, there's three eighths. And how many times do we see uh, three tails? We've got one. And if you check this out, hey, we did it right because 1 8 plus 3 8 is 4 8 plus 3 8 is 7 8 plus 1 8 is 8 8. So our probability mass function adds up to 1. So that's really good. Anyhow, so when we are defining our probability mass function for a binomial distribution, we can use this handy dandy equation. And in Excel, it's even easier. And our commander, they'll actually just give us our probability mass function for us. Now along with that, uh, we can also, there's also a shortcut for how to determine the expected value and the variance within a binomial situation. So if we want to know the expected value, so the expected value of x in a binomial situation, remember only true for binomial, you take the number of trials multiplied by your probability. That'll give you your expected value. That is way faster than going through all the columns. And then next we can do the variance of your discrete random variable. And this one is pretty simple too. This is going to be again n times p and then all we have to do is 1 minus p where n is the number of trials that we're doing and p is the probability of success. So that will give you your variance. If you wanted the standard deviation you just take the square root of that. Uh, but this is binomial distributions in a nutshell.